Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video will be about polar uncharged amino acids. Five of the 20 amino acids fall under this category. They include serine, threonine, cysteine, asparagine, and glutamine. The acronym I usually remember this is STICNIC. Again, the acronym is made of the one-letter abbreviations used to identify each of the amino acids. This category can be a little challenging to remember, but it's completely doable with a little practice and effort. So let's get into it. I'm going to tell you the method I used to remember these amino acids. Firstly, I found commonalities in the R groups of these five amino acids. Then I figured out that there are three types of similarities between each group. So let's think of these as boxes and we put in each amino acid into the appropriate box. So the first box would contain amino acids that have a hydroxyl group, that is an OH group. The second box will contain amino acids that have a sulfur atom in the R group. And the third box will contain amino acids that have an amide group. An amide group is a group where you have a carbon atom double bonded to an oxygen atom and single bonded to a NH2 group and another atom or group, as you can see here. Now that we have these three boxes, then we put the appropriate amino acids into them. So the two amino acids that fall into the first box are serine and threonine. This is because they are the only two amino acids in this category that contain a hydroxyl group. One amino acid falls into the second box. This is cysteine. This is because this amino acid contains a sulfur atom in the R group. And in the third box, we have two amino acids that go into it. These are asparagine and glutamine. And this is because the R groups contain an amide group. If you remember the acronym STICNIC, then the division of these amino acids follow the exact same method. You just need to know that the first box has two amino acids, second box has one, third one has two amino acids as well. So now let's look at their structures more closely. Serine. The R group of serine has one carbon atom that is attached to the alpha carbon. This R group carbon atom has two hydrogen atoms and a hydroxyl group. Once you memorize this, it becomes easy for you to remember the structure of threonine. Let's look at threonine. As you can see, this too has an OH group and therefore that's why we put it in the first box. And if you compare this to serine, you see that the structure is very similar. You get the structure of threonine when you add a methyl group to the end of the R group of serine. The great news is that only three amino acids of the 20 that we need to know contain OH groups as a part of their R groups. They are tyrosine, serine, and threonine. If there is no benzene ring, you automatically know that you can eliminate tyrosine. And therefore, from that point onwards, you basically have to differentiate whether it's serine or threonine. Now let's look at cysteine, which was the amino acid that we put into the second box. If you look at the structure of cysteine, you see that it has a sulfhydryl group at the end of the R side chain. Similar to amino acids with OH groups, amino acids with sulfur atoms are also relatively easy to identify because there are only two amino acids that have sulfur atoms of the 20 amino acids that we need to know. One is methionine and the other is cysteine. One of the quickest differences you see is that methionine has a longer side chain than cysteine does. And in methionine, the sulfur atom is found in the middle of the side chain, while in cysteine, the sulfur atom is found at the end of the side chain. Now that we have completed three of the five amino acids in this category, Let's look at the remaining two. If you remember, these two fell in the last box that we created, the box that contains amino acids that have amide groups. 
there are only two amino acids that contain amide groups out of all the 20 amino acids that we need to know. So it's kind of easy to identify them. Essentially, you only need to be able to differentiate between the two amino acids that contain the amide groups. So let's look at asparagine and glutamine, which fall under this category. This is asparagine and this is glutamine. In asparagine, there is one carbon atom separating it from the alpha carbon, while in glutamine, there are two carbon atoms. This is the only difference. So if you are able to identify the structure of asparagine, then you are only required to add another carbon between the R group and the alpha carbon to know the structure of glutamine. Before I end the video, here are some tips for you to remember the amino acids better. Make an acronym or a phrase to remember the amino acids for each group. If you're making an acronym, Consider using the single letter abbreviations to minimize confusion on exam day. If you are producing a phrase, make sure that the first letter of the word in these phrases refer to the single letter abbreviations to minimize confusion as well. Try to make acronyms or phrases that are personal to you, funny, and are wild. This helps you to remember them better. And lastly, Use the acronyms and phrases often to make sure that you remember them. I used to play this amino acid matching game for a few minutes every day to make sure they were fresh in my mind. I'll include a link to that game in the description section below in case any of you want to try that out too. That's it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe as that helps the channel out a lot. Click the video on the left hand side to learn about the next class of amino acids. If you want to learn about all the 20 amino acids at the same time, please click the video on the right. See you next time. Bye!